Welcome back. Jim McCormick and John Payne joining us again. Jim, we saw the oil markets edge higher this week. As you look at ethanol demand, as you look at some of these other impacts on the market, you know, what are you watching? Which commodity do you think that it could really show its head in? Well, I think the one you got to watch the most for the commodities time is the oil market. It is working higher. A couple things driving it higher. Goldman Sachs said they're relatively positive with commodities as investment in 2023. And I think that brought some money to our markets. But the other thing is just the reopening of China. After being locked down for several years for COVID, they've unlocked and that's got people very optimistic of the demand for China for commodities. The one thing I want to point out, Tyne, though, if you look at it historically, our economy kind of lags China movement by about four quarters or roughly a year. So as China starts to reopening, I think you're seeing a lot of people get excited about it. But history says we're not really going to get that punch in demand and optimism for maybe up until this time a year from now. So uh, something we need to watch. But oil is the canary in the coal mine for pretty much all the commodities. Well, John, cattle markets, we saw some impressive trade this week, some historic trade, as I know you're going to, to, to point out. But when you look at some of the positive movements, it seems like with inflation and some of those reports, do you think that just further fuels this cattle market? Yeah, I think it fuels the beef prices, you know, and, and we've, the way I kind of look at cattle demand, it's like a tube of toothpaste, all right? And so the, the, the packer side, they tend to get it first. Uh, we've gotten a lot of that, that demand, as we, we talked about post-COVID, where, you know, margins for, for, for packing houses were like double what they had been in such really record levels. That has now gone away. Packing margins have leveled out, and now it's in the feed sector, the crush sector. So if you're buying feeder cattle or buying feeder pigs, even feeding them $6 corn with, uh, you know, $450 meal, profit margins are pretty good. Uh, and then I think the the down the road chain here will be the feeder side where, uh, you know, the cow calf producers really are not even at these prices incentivized to go out and really increase production, hold back heifers. So at this point, I would be um, I'd be a little skeptical of be selling any breaks here, specifically in the uh, in the feeder markets. Uh, the markets, the one difference is we're trading 170 on the uh, uh, April fats. The last time we traded that was 2014. December of 2014, and the market was at a steep inversion when that happened. Now we're at a carry, meaning the markets are somewhat normal with these prices. We have supply in line. So I think you catch a supply chain problem somewhere. I think that's where feeder cattle can really go up and uh, you know put a dent in those in the feedlot. So I'd be, uh, be careful here to get too short on the feeder side. Jim, it may, be, it may have been too much of a good thing for moisture as far as California. You know, we just assess that damage. But as we look at the plains, we are seeing some storms pop up, some of that those winter storms, some snow that hopefully will replenish some of that moisture. But is it enough that we will see that drastically change our herd size here as we're hearing that more producers may even be thinking about more liquidation? Well, exactly. I think that's big the problem right now. I, I think the biggest concern we've got for the demand for the beef market tying is everyone's bullish on the supply side of the situation. You look, again, you know, we've been in a herd liquidation for four years now. My biggest concern is the demand. The reality is we're probably going to go into a recession. You know, credit card debt is racking up for the consumers. Interest rates for credit cards are now at all-time all highs. And I think you just got to be a little bit leery that the demand may not be as optimistic as people think. And it's not just here in the United States, Stein. It is pretty much around the world. You know, the bank, central banks around the world are all raising interest rates. It is slowing the economies around the world. And like I said, everyone's betting on China to bail us out. And I just don't think China's going to be able to do it as quick as the market's thinking. So uh, our argument is whenever you have an opportunity to lay off some risk, don't be afraid to do it. Well, I know it's a little too early to get into this acreage debate, John. But as you look at the, you know, the, the crop production reports and the impact that it had on cotton prices, do you think we are going to see a disappearance of cotton acres coming up in 2023? And where do you think those acres will move to? I think they'll go to Milo and corn in, in the Southern Plains. And I think we'll, uh, in, in you know, the Delta region, certainly go chase soybeans. Um, the long run story here, uh, I think when it comes to what the farmer is going to do is credit, you know, borrowing money is going to be a different, it's going to be a story this year. You know, we haven't had to talk about that for quite, quite a while when it comes to actually putting in, um, you know, the putting the crop in the ground, which one's cheaper. Um, you know, you have near term interest rates at, at very, very high levels. So it's going to squeeze a lot of the profitability for labor inputs. Uh, and then hopefully that output price would stay strong so that folks can recoup that. But I still stay in the camp that you're going to see corn acres probably to 92 million, 93 million. Just in my history, producers like to plant corn. And, uh, you know, I, 
it's the, the hardest thing in the world right now to get, sell this inverted market. You know, you got new crop prices flirting with $6. Uh, you know, you just worry how quickly things could reel. Should we have some sort of black swan that uh, obviously nobody be talking about at this point? Yeah, definitely. John, thank you. Jim, thank you for joining us this weekend. We do need to take a quick break and then we will introduce you to a Horizon Award winner that will be recognized next week during Top Producers event. Stay with us.